Do you want better abs, buns, and shoulders? Do you want to feel better moving, standing, lifting? Hi there, I'm Nancy Nash with Starfish Strength. I'm a personal trainer and group fitness instructor, and I've had the pleasure of working with clients from all walks of life. And today, I wanna to give you three exercises that I believe everybody can benefit from. So whether you're an executive that sits for hours a day, you're a stay-at-home mom, a competitive power lifter, or you put roofs on houses all day, there are certain exercises that we can all benefit from. So today I wanna give you three of them that will help your shoulders, abs, back, and your legs feel and move great. Setting up for our workout today, you will wanna make sure you've got a couple items. You'll want enough floor space so that you can reach overhead and point your toes. You'll also want an exercise mat, dumbbells if you have them, or a household item that has some length and a little bit of weight to it. If you tend to have sensitive neck and shoulder muscles, make sure you have a rolled up towel handy. And if you have a looped resistance band, have that handy too, and I'll show you how to progress these exercises using it. And as always, don't forget your water. So all three of these exercises are going to be completely on your back. So again, if you do have a sensitive neck, this is where you might want your rolled up towel. However, if you can lay your head completely down on the floor and it's comfortable without the towel, I would suggest doing that because really this is how we want our posture to be. So we're gonna start with a basic glute bridge. I wanna position my feet on the floor so they're about as wide as my hips and they're nice and straight. If it feels reasonable, I'm gonna bring the heels pretty close to my hips, but if that's uncomfortable for your knees, then you could walk the feet forward just a little bit. So once I've got my feet positioned, I really wanna draw the belly button in and then I'm gonna squeeze the glutes, the tush muscles, and lift the hips. Now, I don't wanna outpace my tighter side. Most of us have a hip that feels a little bit tighter than the other. The other thing you can notice here is that your hips tend to want to shift to one side. So as much as I possibly can, I'm gonna to try to keep that straight hip, knee, and ankle alignment so that we're really stretching and working the muscles in the position that we want them to be strong in. My hands can just rest comfortably on the floor. I'm actually gonna put the palms face down. And if this feels difficult to lift my hips like this, I could actually push into my palms a little bit to help with that lift. Now, if you notice that you're starting to push yourself backwards, I want you to think a little more consciously about lifting with the hips rather than just pushing through the feet. So I'm gonna lift the hips so that I'm sending them forward a little bit towards my knees. So drawing the belly button in, squeezing the glute muscles and lifting the hips up and forward towards the knees. Nice job. I hope your legs feel a little bit more awake. We're gonna go into the upper body, so I wanna grab my dumbbell or my household item. So our next exercise is the dumbbell pullover, and I have two dumbbells here. I'm gonna use the lighter one first, and then if you do need more weight, try that in the second set. So I'm gonna lay on my back, similar to how I did in the first exercise. You could bring your feet a little bit further away from the hips if you like. I would keep the knees bent so that you'll really be able to feel yourself pulling the back towards the floor. So I have a choice here about how I hold the dumbbell. So I could either hold it at the ends or I could hold it one hand on top of the other. If you hold it at the ends, make sure that you give each finger a job so that the thumb and the pointer finger aren't doing all the heavy lifting. And then if you do decide to grip the handle, I suggest trying it first with your non-dominant hand on the bottom because you'll think a lot more about how you use the muscles. 
So form with this, I wanna keep the elbows a little narrower than the shoulders. Belly pulled in, keep that back pushed towards the floor. And then as I reach overhead, I'm not going to additionally bend the elbows. So even though this looks really simple, there's actually a lot going on here. I'm really keeping the belly button drawn in. I'm keeping the back pressing towards the floor. So if you're doing this with a partner, you can have them reach their hand underneath your back and kind of check you to see if uh, you're cheating. <laughs> so really this is actually gonna not just help my shoulders, but as you can probably feel, it's gonna help my abs and my back. This is a really great one for posture. It's also a really great one for working the triceps. So regardless of what your goal is, this is a great exercise. Hopefully your shoulders and your upper body feel really warmed up at this point. Our third exercise is called dead bug. You can call this zombie bug maybe more accurately. We're gonna lay down. So I'm gonna draw my belly button in, position my knees right over my hips so that I can really feel that intense ab engagement and then bring the wrists right above the shoulders. So just holding in this position, drawing your belly button in should kind of have your lower abs fiery. Then from there, I'm gonna press one heel and extend my fingers behind me. So if I'm really working the abs, really drawing the belly button in, pressing the back towards the floor, this should feel really intense. If I need to make this easier, I can raise the heels a little bit. And you can see that takes a lot of the tension off the abs. And you can also see it's much easier for me to hold my knees back here behind my hip. As soon as I bring the knee level with the hip, that gets a lot more intense on the abs. If you start to feel anything unkind in your lower back, make sure that you bring the knees in just a little bit more, or you can go to the single leg version of this. I'm actually going to leave a link in the description to a video that I have on that. Whew, I don't know about you, but that was tough. So make sure you grab some water, and then we're gonna go through this a second time with some advancements. This is really difficult, but it will get easier as your body gets stronger, so hang in there. So we're gonna do our glute bridge exercise again. And this time I'm gonna put the looped band right above my knees. So once I got my looped band right above my knees, I'm gonna walk the feet in a little bit, try to make sure that they're an even distance from the hips, but I should feel just a little resistance in the front of my thighs. Placing the palms face down on the floor, I'm gonna draw my belly button in, squeeze the glute muscles and raise the hips. So now what you should notice is that the band is trying to pull your knees together. So you're gonna to have to more consciously focus on keeping the hips, knees, and ankles the same distance. So what I'm lining up here is the hip socket, the joints. So lining up the hip socket joint with the knee and the ankle. The other thing I really wanna make sure of with this exercise is that I'm not just allowing the hips to fall down to the ground. I'm controlling that lower so that I really am developing the muscles in the back of the legs, the hamstrings that are helping me descend. So you should notice this feels a lot more intense in the glutes, in the butt muscles than it did the first time. And if you aren't noticing that, when you lower down to the floor, make sure you really draw that belly button in before you lift the hips. And then I also wanna remind you that if you feel like you're pushing through the feet and you're kind of pushing yourself backwards, make sure that you're really lifting the hips forward as you push up. So lifting from the hips rather than just pushing through the feet will really help me feel like I'm using my muscles to lift my body weight and really getting that muscle tone and strength that I want. So not to be mean, but I hope that your buns feel a little bit fiery. As we go back into our dumbbell pullover, if you have a heavier weight available, I'm gonna suggest that you try that this time. Lining up for this exercise, I wanna hold it right over the chest, bring the elbows in, pull the abs in, and then do that overhead reach with just a slight micro bend in my elbows. 
So you'll notice it's gonna be a little bit harder to maintain just that slight bend this time. You should actually notice that you really feel this in the abs. So even if you have a super strong upper body, this is a really great alignment exercise, not just to develop the upper abs, but also to keep your shoulders feeling great, keep them feeling healthy and avoid injury. And if this feels heavy in your upper body, this is a great upper body exercise. So we're developing the triceps, we're developing the shoulders, the back and the abs. So I'm guessing that you're starting to feel it in some or all of those places at this point. And then remember that you have that grip option. So if you don't really feel it in the upper abs, then I would try that narrower grip. But if you find that holding that narrow grip is actually kind of bothering your shoulders, then try that wider grip. Just make sure that you use your pinky, ring, and middle finger so that you're not just making the thumb and the first finger do all the work. As this gets heavier, you might also notice that it's a little harder to keep your elbows narrower than the shoulders, but I would really encourage you to do that so that you really feel great in the shoulders after this. Nice job. So we're gonna go over that dead bug exercise again, and this time I'm gonna use my looped band to give me a little additional resistance on the abs and legs. I'm gonna position the looped band around my feet I've got pretty long feet, so I'm gonna put it around the arches of my shoes, but you might find that it's gonna be a little bit closer to the balls of your feet, and that works too. Just make sure it's not too far up towards your toes so it doesn't snap back at you. Setting up for this exercise again, I'm gonna bring the knees over the hips as I draw the belly button in, and bring the wrists right above the shoulders and start alternatively pressing the heels as I draw the other knee towards me. Now you're really gonna notice that the knees are gonna try to pull together as are the ankles. So I wanna try to maintain that ankle, knee, and hip socket alignment again. It's gonna be a lot trickier, but I know you can do this. So now with the band, you're gonna feel the outer and inner thighs working. You're gonna feel the front of the thigh and the front of the hip working, as well as your entire core. We've really taken this exercise up quite a few notches. And always remember that you could lift your feet a little bit and that will take a little bit of the pressure off the muscles that you're working. So if you need to take an extra break or you need to do some of them with the looped band and some without, that's totally fine. Take what you need, this is your workout. Nice job, that was a tough little workout and you hung in there. Thanks so much for watching. I hope these exercises left you feeling great and you feel one step closer to seizing your inner star. If you do have any additional questions or you're looking for more help with your exercise routine, you can leave me a comment below or reach out to me in my application link in the description. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.